quite healthy. Set up our problem, exact same way. We're going to have our x minus mu divided by our standard deviation. So that would be 350 minus 237 divided by 43, which is going to equal our z-score, which equals 2.63, which is 2.63 standard deviation. So if you mean, when we look up this z-score in the back, we get a probability at that point to the left equaling 0 0.9957. So this is the probability of 350 and less, the total prob probability. But on this one, we want to count over 350. So in order to find over this point, we want to find the area to the right, the area associated to the right on the curve, right? So if we were to kind of draw this out, here's our mean, and we went over 1, 2.63 2 standard deviation. So what this graph tells us is everything this way, which is equaling to the 99, uh, 0.9957 area under the curve, but we want to find out this area right here, that little tail area. So to find out that area, which is the complement, we take 1 minus 0.9957, and we get that to equal 0 0.0043, which is the answer we want of individuals with over 350 CD4 count. Number 9. Suppose a local sheriff's department decides to compile a database managing the reported blood alcohol concentration, or BAC, for every detainee suspected of driving under the influence. So we let X distribute as a normal distribution of 0 0.097 with a standard deviation of 0 0.008. So once again, if part A says if the current uh, legal limit for uh, BAC while driving is 0 0.08, what proportion of drivers in this database were perhaps wrongfully detained for driving under the influence. So, same as we did before, we want to find the probability of people who are wrongfully detained, so our x minus mu over standard deviation. So for this one, we would put our 0 0.08 minus 0 0.097 divided by 0 0.008. And that's going to give us a z-score of negative 2.125, which when we look up in the back of the book, we'll find a value associated at 0.017. And that's the area. There's our, our mean, and then we have, we're over two standard deviations. So we want to find this area to the left, and then we find out that that's 0 0.017. That were a uh, proportion of drivers in the database that were wrongfully detained. So, the next part the previous legal limit for BAC drivers was 0.1, but proportion of drivers in this database would have been under the legal limit under the earlier law. So, so our problem same way 0.1 minus 0 0.097 divided by our standard deviation 0 0.008. We're going to get a z value of 0.375. When we look this up in the back of the book, going to equal 0.6443, and that is our answer. For this over, say, 64% of the portion of drivers in this database would have been under the legal limit under the earlier law. Question 10. Age is variable that is almost always included in any prospective study. Suppose one particular investigation, the mean age was 37.5 years and the standard deviation of 6.2 years. What is the probability of selecting an individual that is 39 years of age or older? So, set up our problems set up very similar to what we're doing. We're trying to find out the probability of selecting someone that's the age 39 years or older. Put this into our formula of x minus mu over the standard deviation. 39 minus 37.5 divided by 6.2. It's going to give us 0.24 z-score. When we look up z-score in our table B, z-score table B, uh, we're going to get a 0.5948. But once again, that's the probability associated at that point. So mean, and if we're over only 0.24 over from standard deviations, that's only going to tell us the area point this, at that point to the left. We want to find at the age at 39 years of age or older, so we want to find out this area. So we have to find the complement of it. So 1 
minus point five nine four eight equal point four zero five two. So what is the probability of selecting someone between the ages of thirty two and thirty six? So we set up the problem the same way and, and then we're gonna take our B minus A to find the probability in between. I'm gonna go a little quick on this one. So we have our 32 minus 37.5 divided by 6.2. When we get there, we're going to get a z-score of negative 0.887. When we look up in table B, the, our top probability associated with that is 0.1894. That's for 32. For 36, 36 minus 37.5 divided by 6.2. You give us a z score equal to negative 0.241. Our table B in the back is going to give us 0.4052. We're going to take 0.4052 to find the area in between minus 0.1894, and that's going to give us the area in between, which is 0.2158. This next part, I'm just going to do part A because it's the exact same thing for part B, and you can see the answers in the back. I'm going to give myself a little bit more uh, room here to draw it out. So, assuming the mean of the distribution. So what this study is, let's go back to the investigators looking at the relationship between uh, periodontal disease and the onset of hypertension. Suppose investigators had to look at heights as a variable that may confound the relationship between exposure and case status in the, in the study. After collecting information about the height of each participant, he assembles a database that approximate that approximate height with a normal distribution. So assuming the mean of the distribution is 176.2 centimeters, what is it? with a standard deviation of 17.5 centimeters, what are the highest and lowest 1% of heights in the population? So the way you do this is you go to the back of the book in table B and you want to find what is before we do that. So we, we want to set up our formula and the formula is going to be our, what I'm going to call our Z percentile multiplied by our standard deviation plus and minus our mean. So we know our standard deviation is 17.5, and we're going to add that and subtract it to our mean of 176.2. So we have to find our z percentile. Our z percentile is the highest and lowest 1%. So the lowest 1% would be actually 1%. So you find table B associated with 1%, and you'll find a value that's going to equal negative 2.33. The highest 1% is going to be 2.33 positive because they're symmetrical and inverse. We're going to use that value. So now you just plug in your values, either negative 2.33 for your z percentile times your standard deviation plus or minus plus uh, 176.2. It's not there's not a minus there. I'm sorry. It's just plusing it, uh, just adding it to uh, the the mean distribution. So when you put this in, you get negative 2.33 times. 17.5 plus or minus, or er, plus 7, 176.2. Your highest, or this is going to give you your lowest because you're doing your negative value, so that's going to give you your lowest 1%. So your lowest score is going to be 1, 3, 5.425. And then when you put 0.233 times 17.5 plus 76.2, it's going to give you your highest value, 216.975. So that's your highest and lowest percent, highest and lowest one percent of this population. B is going to be the same thing except you change your mu to 184.8 and your standard deviation change to one or 16.1. So you, you set your formula up the same way. You're going to have your negative 2.33 because you're still using your highest and lowest one percent. Multiply that by your new standard deviation and multiply that. Or then add that to your mean height of the population. So number 12, 
we start talking about using hypothesis statements. For this one, uh, today, the, the prostate-specific antigen test has received an excessive amount of publicity in the scientific literature for its controversial low sensitivity and specificity, assuming specificity, specificity of 31% for scores above 4, with a standard deviation of 9%. The backlash from the American Urology Association has been to recommend has been to recommend against using the PSA test to screen for prostate cancer in men without certain known risk factors. Suppose a new company has patented a device that is intended to have a much higher specificity than the PSA test. In the report, the company claims that it has achieved an average specificity of 62% from an SRS of 546 patients. So what we want to do has the new company develop a truly more specific test to screen for prostate cancer using an alpha level 0.05. So what we want, want to do is we want to set up our, uh, our uh, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis and then figure out our uh, probability and z-score and then p-value associated with this. In order to do this, our formula is you're going to have your uh, alternative hypothesis minus your null hypothesis divided by what we call our standard error. Standard error equals our standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So when we add in the values for this, we get 0 0.31 minus 0 0.62 divided by 0 0.09 divided by the square root of 546 equal all this out, you get a negative 80.49. So this is our z-score. So when this tells us that this is negative 80.49 standard deviations away from the mean that it was finding, we can't find this value in the back of our book because it's just astronomically high. So what we'd say is there's a p-value of less than 0 0.0001. In actuality, the p-value is probably 0 0.0000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000